Good morning. Blessed day, everyone. Welcome again to our live stream. And this is coming from your brethren in Paranaque Church of Christ. This is your brother in Christ, Ronnie Cariaga. We are now in our 30th week in quarantine. And just a few more days, then we'll be able to go back to our normal and not with the new normal. Our reading for this morning is based on Romans chapter 1 verses 11, um, 1 through 11 I should say, 5 verses 1 through 11. Therefore since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare, one would dare even to die. But God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by His blood. Much more shall we be saved by Him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by His life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. May the Lord bless our reading. As we look back from last week's lesson, what God has done based from Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 down to 14, we have seen that in Christ all of the spiritual or every spiritual blessings have been showered, have been given to us. Paul called it gifts or glorious grace of God he has lavished upon us. And that is why, according to Paul again in Ephesians, that is why we can stand holy and without fault before him. And these things are, we're seeing again in the book of Romans. And that in all of these things, God purposed it. God planned it. God planned it, executed it, and purposed it that all things be done in Christ. We now ask, where do we stand? In all of this, what is my present standing before God? Or what is my present standing with God? For those who have been accustomed trusting themselves or accustomed to doing things, will be asking, what must I do to be with right standing with God? <laughs> it is what he said, what it is. Our current standing with God, according to Romans chapter 5, verses 1 down through 11, is this. <coughs> Interesting. Nakakatuwa po na kung papaanong umpisahan ni Apostol Pablo na. One, mag-uumpisa si Apostol Pablo na sasabihin niya yung therefore. When we talk about current standing with God, he will start with the therefore. Why therefore? Because in chapter 1, Paul established that the righteousness of God is being revealed from heaven. And it is from faith. For faith, that is your Romans chapter 1, verses 17. But before the 17, he says, 
the gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believes or who believes. So he established that. In chapter 1 also, he made sure that the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness. And then he went on, chapter 2, that the Jews are guilty, that the Gentiles are guilty, because chapter 3, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So how, how then can we live? And then he made it chapter 4. In chapter 4, Paul argued that our father Abraham, not only the father of the Jewish nation, not only the father of the Israelites, but our father, father in the faith. And he said that Abraham was justified by faith and not by his works. Therefore, he became our father. And we, his children, thus fulfilling the promise that every family will be blessed through him. This is where we stand. This is the therefore in chapter 5, verses 1 down through 11 and the following verses. And then he will be using again Adam for that matter. So he started with this. And I want you to see these things. Samahan po ninyo kasi napakaganda po talaga ng mga versikulong ito. Kung inyo pong makikita maigi, ito talaga yung basihan kung bakit ang iba sa atin or ang inyong lingkod ay may pagtitiwala at may katiyakan ng kaligtasan. Tingnan nyo maigi. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, ang ating Present na kalagayan. Our present situation is dependent upon the past action. Ang present na kalagayan po natin sa harapan ng Diyos is that we have peace with God. Yan ang condition natin ngayon. So hindi tayo kaaway ng Diyos. So hindi sa atin nahahayag ang galit ng Diyos. Chapter 1, the wrath of God is being revealed against all unrighteousness. No, because we have peace with God. Paano yon? Condition niya is that yung past action because we have been justified by faith. Past tense po yan. Participle. We have been justified by faith. Pang nagdaan, naganap na yan. Ginawa tayong sakdal o ginawa tayong matuwid sa pamagitan ng pananampalataya at mananatili tayo sa ganyang kalagayan. At ang kaparaanan ng pagiging justified natin, inaring ganap o inaring tama, righteous, ay sa pamamagitan ng Panginoong Jesus. Interesting. Interesting. Yung kalagayan natin, our present situation that we have peace with God is dependent upon the past action that we have been justified by faith and we remain in that condition because it is through the blood or through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we think about justified or justification, what does justified mean? Uh, Webster will simply or Miriam will simply give us, it has been proved to be right or reasonable or declared or made righteous in the sight of God. So ang ating kalagayan ngayon, we've been declared and made righteous in the sight of God. Agency, it is through our Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya ang present situation natin ay, we have peace with God. Beautiful passages. Kaya kung titignan natin maigi, and I went through that, I Look into those verses. Let me present to you from New Living Translation. Tinan nyo itong translation na NLT. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, direct siya, ano, no? hindi na kailangan ipaliwanag because it is the New Living Translation. He said, because we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God. And then, yung agency or yung reason, because of 
what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Who needs a commentator for that? Who needs someone else to explain to him that? Kung ganyan siya kasimple at ganyan siya kadali. Kung ganyan siya kalinaw. Hindi na kailangan ang madaming pagpapaliwanag. Pero bakit kaya maraming mga Kristiyano pa rin ang walang tiwala sa kanyang tunay na katayuan sa harapan ng Diyos? Kapag ka tinanong mo tungkol sa kanyang kaligtasan, tungkol sa kanyang pananampalataya, laging may agam-agam na sana tama siya, sana karapat dapat siya, sana ang lahat, lahat na, sana, 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 lahat na lang sana. Yet it is here. Plain and simple, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Tatlong prepositions po ang kinamit niya sa Greek. The ek, the pros, and the dia. Yung ek, magsasabi siya ng out of, origin. Saan galing? Yung pros ay yung direction, or with, or to, or from. Tapos yung agency, yung dia, ay magsasalita siya ng agency kaparaanan. So, origin, direction, agency, at lagi niyang ginagamit is itong mga bagay-bagay na nakikita ninyo sa harapan. You can't get any clearer than this. Friends and brethren, indeed, we have assurance of our faith. If we only read and understand what the text says and don't hold on to the traditions held by who knew, you know who or who knows who, wag pang hawakan yung tradisyon na laging kasama tayo. May gagawin ako dapat, dapat pahirapan ko sarili ko para maligtas, dapat ito gagawin ko para maligtas. Then... Nahihirapan tuloy magpaliwanag sa aklat ng Roma, sa aklat ng Efeso, sa aklat ng... Sa lahat-lahat halos. Because of the righteousness that is based upon works. Righteousness and being made right with God based upon our own kind of righteousness. And it is not God's kind of righteousness. Romans chapter 1 verses 16 and 17. And every now and then, I will always keep on saying, lagi kong sinasabi ito, we can quote Romans 1.16 and we forget Romans chapter 1 verse 17. In it, in the gospel, through the gospel, the righteousness of God is being revealed from faith to faith or from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. And that is quoted from the Old Testament. And to think, sa lumang tipan, ano? They have been, sa lumang tipan, dependent upon the Torah, observance of the Torah. Pero lagi ang sinasabi, the righteous shall live by faith. It is absolutely none of self and all of thee. None of self, none of me, and all of God. My righteousness is not dependent upon what I do, but dependent upon what God has done. And my faith is that I relied upon what Jesus did on Calvary and what God has done to save me. Verse 2. Look at these verses. Through Him, sa pamamagitan niya, agency. Through Him, we have also obtained access, <laughs> gained access on some other. By faith. Into what? Into this grace in which we stand. We have gained access into this grace in which we stand. That is a computer lingo. I am not a tech savvy, but I know how. For example, if there, if there will be a file File name, grace in which we stand. What is this grace 
in which we stand. And I'd like to know that grace in which we stand. And then we were given an access password. And the password being given is faith so that we can access that. And that faith, and that password, or that faith, was based through Him, through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is obtained through Jesus Christ our Lord. We have gained that access for that grace in which we stand, for that file. It is again through Jesus Christ our Lord. And enough for us to rejoice, just like opening a file. Opening a file wherein we can access these things. And we marvel on the content of the file. Nakakatuwa yan. And yet, hindi nakikita ng marami sa atin itong mga bagay-bagay na to. In word for word, this grace in which we stand. NLT, gamitin natin ulit. NLT, can you please give me your version of that verse too? Sabi niya, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of highest privilege. Where we now stand. What privilege is that? And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. <laughs> Hindi na liliwanag pa. Wala na mas liliwanag pa dyan sa bagay na yan. We can't get any clearer than this. Because of our faith in Christ has brought us into this place of highest glory. Where we now stand. We are standing Presently. That's why we can stand, as Ephesians would put it, we can stand holy and blameless before God. Ito yung, ito yung meron tayo. Ito yung katayuan natin. Nakakatayaw tayong banal at walang kapintasan sa harapan ng Diyos dahil sa pananampalataya natin sa ginawa ni Kristo Jesus doon sa krus. It is always what God has done at hindi kailangan kailanman what must I do to be saved. Oh, nasanay tayo. Oh, five steps yan. Upang maligtas ka, five steps yan. No, no, no. Hindi po nababatay sa ganun. Bagamat katuruan, bagamat nasanay tayo sa mga ganong bagay, kaya nahihirapan tuloy magpaliwanag at natatakot ang ilan na ipaliwanag ang aklat ng Roma. Not only that, hindi lang yon sabi pa ni Apostol Pablo. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings. <laughs> Knowing that suffering produces endurance. Nakakatuwa. Sufferings produces endurance. Iba ang perspektibo ni Apostol Pablo sa mga dinadanas natin, pinagdadaanan ng mga kahirapan. Para sa kanya, it produces endurance. Ang ilan, pagka may mga problema, sasabihin, ah, pagsubok ng Diyos yan sa iyo, kapatid. Sinusubukan ng pananampalataya mo, kapatid. O pagsubok lamang ng Diyos yan. No, 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 no. Ang tamang perspective, ayon kay Apostol Pablo, batay sa Roma 5, Uno hanggang onsi ay ito. Hindi lang yan, sabi niya, nagagalak tayo sa mga sufferings kasi ito nagproproduce ng endurance. One more thing, endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured, pang nagdaan na naman, sa ating mga puso, at ang banal na Espiritu, pang nagdaan na naman, has been given to us. There it is. Andyan lahat-lahat, mga kapatid. Proper perspective on suffering, or better perspective on suffering, or when we suffer, is not that God is punishing us, God is doing these things to us, but that it produces endurance. And produces character. And produces hope. A hope that does not put us to shame. Because 
the love of God has been poured into our hearts and we have been given from our past study the Holy Spirit as a down payment an earnest and assurance and here we are it is because of God's abiding presence in us we rejoice in our sufferings God's abiding presence in our lives and because of the empowering of the Holy Spirit that made us his dwelling place oh look at this for while we were still weak at the right time Christ died for the ungodly for one will scarcely die for a righteous person though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Those weak and sinners, the same. Christ died for the ungodly, Christ died for us. Thus the weak are the sinners, the ungodly are us. Christ died for us. And in dying, God did not set any conditions. Why will I give my son? Are they good enough? No, there were no conditions and no conditions set. But just plain demonstration of God's love. And that is what we need to see in these verses. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. How reassuring are these words. It is the uh, how we have been made right from the very beginning. How we have been justified from verse 1. It has always been this. We have now been justified by Jesus. Justified by His blood. We have been made righteous. We have been washed from all our sins by the blood of Jesus. We have been proclaimed, made righteous through His blood. It is through His death, through His blood. And look at how NLT again would put it. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, He will certainly save us from God's judgment. That is verse 9. And look at these things. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by His life. That is the if-then argument, condition, and the result. If, if while we were enemies, if while we were weak, if while we were still sinners, we were reconciled to Him, Jesus died for us. The then, therefore, is that because Jesus died for us while we were sinners, while we were yet enemies of God, then by His life our salvation is assured. We shall be saved because He died for us. And our lives are now hidden in Christ. It was not a condition but a realization. He did not give his son for nothing that should be things. Yan sana may isip natin ano. Uh, hindi siya condition kundi bagkos ay patutuo, patunay kasi ang sasabihin ng Diyos, hindi ko ibinigay ang anak ko para sa iyo para mawala ng kabuluhan ang kamatayan at ang dugo ng aking anak. Christ died for nothing. Kung hindi mo ma-realize yan, Tutusin, God invested so much on us or upon us or God put so much paid so dearly for you. It is the life, 
the blood of his son that was made to buy us back into a relationship with him. If you will, this is the return of in investment. God invested a lot for us. Making sure heaven will not be empty. So God sent forth his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And here plays all the parables. If you could think of all the parables, it will reinforce what is being pointed out by Paul in all of these things. The parable of the wedding banquet, the parable of the invited guests, the parable of that the king said, go to the sideways and the byways and invite all of them. He wanted heaven to be filled with people, not just chosen few, not just few righteous men in their sights will be there in heaven. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. He tied all things together. From verses 1 through 11, He tied all things together. He said justification, or being declared, or being made right. Our reconciliation being restored into our friendly relations with God. No longer enmity. No longer enemies. And that peace. Freedom from disturbances. Freedom from any accusations. Freedom from any condemnations. Everything has been obtained by faith and accessed through the death of Jesus Christ, our Lord. That is why Paul said, it is enough reason. When you go back, he said, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Rejoicing in God because of these privileges. Enough reason to rejoice because we are assured of our salvation and assured of our condition that we can really stand holy and blameless before Him. Here is where we stand. Here is where I stand. Ito po ang payak na katotohanan. Na tayo ay reconciled, pinagbati na muli sa Diyos. Na tayo ay justified, ginawang matuwid sa harapan ng Diyos. At tayo ay may kapayapaan, ipinagkasundo tayo at mayroon tayong kapayapaan. Walang anumang bagay kahatulan sa mga na kay Kristo Isus. Dahil ito sa pagmamahal ng Diyos sa akin o sa atin. Ito ang tunay na ibang helio. Hindi po ito ibang helio. Muli mga kapatid, papasalamat po ako sa inyong panahon, papasalamat po ako sa pakikinig. And again, I would like to thank you and feel free to share this message and this uh, broadcast to anyone. Muli, hanggang sa susunod. Ito muli ang inyong kapatid, Ronnie Cariaga. Magandang umaga po.